Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Trending. My name is Toke Makinwa. Trending, as always, is brought to you by Airtel. We bring you all of the hottest stars that you can't stop talking about. Now, my guest on today's show is one of the biggest names in Nigeria. He is a business mogul and an innovator. When we come back right after this break, you will get to meet my guest. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching Channel 324. This is Hip TV and of course it's trending. Now our guest on today's show is the one and only Daily Momodu. Nice to have you on Trending. Thank you for asking me It was quite a, a challenge. It was quite a challenge to get with your logistic, your managers. We almost called the presidents just because we wanted to ah, <laughs> That's interesting. You're very I'm very, person. I'm very accessible. Yeah, I'm busy, but then I'm accessible. Really? Yeah, it's just a phone call from Yetunde and I'm here, you know. Okay. As All simple right. as that, I had to take a flight. Well, and someone did not tell me then because <laughs> I was told we had to call, wait for you to approve, wait for someone else to call back. <laughs> you know, all the protocols we did observe. Well, but it's nice to have you. Thank you for the effort. So we do have this tradition on our show, which is called Sample Your Swag. And what that means is basically our guests talks to us about what they're wearing and, you know, basically how they feel today. Well, I feel very cool. Uh, I'm always very relaxed in uh, vivid imagination. Okay. Uh, it's been my designer for over 20 years. So everything you wear is from vivid imagination? Uh, not everything, but most things. Uh, I mean, even my wife says my tummy doesn't look that big <laughs> when I wear vivid. They, I mean, there's a way... They just it, make everything cuts, just look Yeah, nice. everything looks very compact. Yeah. And so. Do you always wear suits and ties or you feel more ah, Very rarely. In fact, I bought two recently. I've, I've never been able to come into them. Wow. Yeah. So I'm a very traditional. Country. Yeah. I mean, I remember going to Toronto, Canada about five years ago and the immigration officer looked at me and said, what do you do for a living? I said, I'm a journalist. Said um, you are in this folkloric dress. I haven't heard that before. <laughs> I said, "What's folkloric about my dress?" It's where I'm and, from. And you know, took me to the counter, t -t 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 tapping. Apparently, she was going on Google to check Who my name. I said, "Ooh!" And then she saw more folkloric dresses jumping out of her computer. You know, and it was so funny. Oh, you know? that's that. That's but that I love to represent Africa. Yeah. Nice, and you wear it very well. I must say. Thank you. So this works. Oh, so you can, thank you. You can keep thank this, you. it works. All right, so let's go on a quick break and check out what's trending today. We'll be right back. On what's trending today, many celebrities, including supermodel Naomi Campbell, have taken to social networks and are taking part in a new wake up call campaign for UNICEF. The campaign, which has been dubbed the New Ice Bucket Challenge, involves the celebrity taking a picture of themselves as they wake up in bed. Pictures are posted with the hashtag wake up call and hashtag UNICEF and each person nominates three other people to do the same. UK UNICEF ambassador Jemima Khan launched a campaign to help Syrian refugee children. Welcome back to Trending on Heap TV. So I was trying to get all your names and I realised at the third time or fourth name I was really, really confused. You have so many names. Why? Uh, because in traditional Yoruba setting, your parents will give you theirs. Your father, your mom, your grandparents, their friends. You can put some money in the bowl on the day of the naming ceremony. And, name the child. and they give a name to a child. So You have godfathers, you have godmothers, you have... So, so far, you have five names that I know about. I know there's Ayobamidele, there's Joseph, you also have Oluwa Sheon, Abayomi, Oju Telegon, and what does that mean, Oju Telegon? Um, Oju Telegon is like shame onto bad oh. belly people. You know what I thought it was? I read it as Oju Telegon. No, Oju Telegon. The eyes follows you everywhere no. you go. <laughs> Oju Telegon. Elegon is someone who is making a mockery. Is it when my mom married my father? Uh, she had been previously married, and she had two kids. My father was also previously married. So by the time they met, my mom was already getting old, and people told her, they mocked her, what are you doing with a husband at your age? You can't even have a child. And, and there you came. Then I came. Wow. And I'm the only child. 
and you of have, my mom for my dad. You've been blessed with so many names and so much <laughs> accomplishments to go with those names. Yes. You've done very well for yourself. Oh, well thank done. you. Well <laughs> and uh, I also heard from a little birdie that you were born and raised in Ileife, a city that is rich in history. So what was it like growing up for you as a little boy? Oh, it was, it was a lot of fun. I mean, very cultural city, so many shrines. Every single day in Ife, there is a festival or what something going on. And uh, I mean, life was not as tedious as we have it today. I mean, I could trek two, three kilometers to school and nobody would be afraid of being kidnapped. And then you are coming back, you want to go and buy bolly, roast, roasted plantain, mm. you can buy roast corn, you can, you know, it, it was just... A free, then you go to the university campus. It was like going to London. Wow. Oh, yeah, I mean, beautiful. The most beautiful campus in uh, Nigeria. In, 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 in Africa, not just in really? Nigeria. Beautiful, oh, trust wow. me. Beautiful. The landscape is just it's surreal. It's breathtaking. Yeah, beautiful. Nice. So, you were one of the very first set of students to take the JAM examination and enter University of Ilefe, where you studied Yoruba. And you made your mark in history very early on in life. Why Yoruba? Did you why did you decide to read Yoruba? Well, I would say I've always been a rebel. Okay. Uh, but I think what contributed to it was the fact that my mom couldn't speak one word of English. Okay. So anytime I woke up in the morning, the first thing is ah leo ajani ori fo wo mo omo banija ori fo wo mo omo rara o ko ma ba fori olagun ori tin jeku ori tin jeja ori tin ja ko gogoro ti choko agbe bo omo buni buni abi bu want you want you see those oriki i mean they prepare you for the day they tell you you come from a pedigree of warriors of very serious minded people you know and the yoruba really fascinated me then in 1977 I got a job as a library attendant at the University of Ife, where I encountered practically most of the African writers from Wole Shoenka to Chino Achebe to Ongu Giwati Ongo to Ayikoyama, Kofi Awuno, all of them. Wow. And I read everything. I, I, I was a voracious reader. I can say I'm very greedy about books. And then I discovered that every year during the graduation ceremony, You will see only two or four people graduate from Yoruba. You will find 200 people in English. You will find French. 200 people in law. You will find people in medicine. Everybody wanted something funky and mm. all that, something trendy. I mean, to use that title. So I said, at the rate things are going, nobody is going to read Yoruba, and our Yoru and our language will be extinct. So I decided to go in for jam. And I was a pioneer jambai in 1978. Wow! Got admitted, but I was it. taking courses in philosophy, in literature, yeah, in like English, and all that. But yeah. my key course was in Yoruba. Yeah. The first year I think we were about 71, but the second year we were 35. Wow. By third year we were 23. By final year we were six. Everybody ran away. <laughs> so only six of us oh graduated. But it, for me, it was different. But I later went back to do a masters in literature and English, and that made me the first Nigerian ever to do a first degree in Yoruba and a masters in literature. Amazing stuff! Yes. I read English language literature as well, so I can imagine how fascinated you were with those yeah. books. So, when did your thirst for journalism? When did you have that bite? It's so funny. It was out of joblessness. Mm. I wanted to be a teacher. Okay. Marry a teacher. And live happily thereafter. Wow! But I couldn't get a job. I went up and down. They had me College of Education, Ikerekiti Polytechnic College of Education. I went to different places. I couldn't get a job. Uh, my mom, who had struggled to send me to school, was getting weak, and I was feeling miserable. All my friends had jobs. I was the only jobless person. So one day, a friend suggested to me that ah, but you have a first degree in Yoruba, a master's in literature. Ah, good combination. You be able to write articles, and so I started contributing to the Guardian newspaper in Lagos and the Sunday Tribune in Ibadan. Mm. And the Guardian was paying me twenty-five naira per article. Wow! I would publish about four, then travel from Ife to Lagos to collect hundred naira and then go back. You know, ah, life. What can you do now? You have to. You have to. You have to. Yeah, to exactly. And then I was writing for the Tribune. I wasn't getting paid for that. 
Then somewhere along the line, people started noticing that, oh, this guy can write well. Because I think first in Yoruba, I then translate into English. And Yoruba is deep. Oh, very deep, so very colorful. Your, yeah. I mean, all the idioms, all the, you know, the proverbs, you know. It, 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 my writing was just different. Yeah. And then I came to Lagos to look for a job. And fortunately for me, I got a job at the African Concord uh, yeah. magazine, which yeah. was owned by Chief Moshuda Biola. And then... I came in contact with my boss, the boss of all bosses, the capo de to the capo, Chief Moshuda Biola, who then turned my life around. You rose really quickly. It was act it's very, very admirable, actually. He became the news editor at the Concord magazine, and then you registered, or, and then you resigned, rather, and became a bread distributor for MKO. So how did that, I mean, from being the news editor to now resigning from that arm and... You know. no, actually, the way it worked was that I started from the African Concord magazine, where okay. I was a staff writer. Within a couple of months, I was moved to a new paper within the same organization called the Weekend Concord, where I started as a staff writer. Two months later, I became literary editor. I had a double promotion. And six months after, I became news editor, and so which made me number three you know, uh, on that paper. And then six months after that, I resigned. I came to Lagos in May. 1988 and became editor of Classic Magazine in May 1990, two years. I was 30 years old at the time. Wow. Uh, I was one of the youngest around at, at that time. And I was the highest paid editor in the of Nigeria at 30. Amazing. And then I spent about 16 months on that job, resigned, and then became a bread distributor. Okay. Yes. Was it something that you wanted to do? No. I mean, I, I was out of job and uh, the, the most painful aspect of unemployment is when people ask you, what do you do now? And you tell them, uh, I don't know. Yeah. So I just wanted a smooth transition. While I was looking for something else to do, I was selling bread and people will laugh. Gah, 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 gah. Ah, editor turns bread seller. In fact, it was headline news really? in a lot of newspapers. Yeah. Wow. But that's me. I mean, I, I'm never ashamed of yeah, I can tell from the way you sound, I can see how passionate you are about life yeah, and about absolutely. everything you do. Well, let's go on a quick break. And when we get back, Dylan Momodo is still in here. We have so many questions to ask him. But you know what? You guys can watch our video of the day before we get back. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Trending on Heap TV. So let's talk about your public relations company because I know that you set up your own public relations company and you had an extremely impressive clientele. Uh, we talk about people from Chief Abiola to Michael Adenuga, Akim Beli Osage, and of course the former chairman of UBA. How did all of that start? I wanted to do a publication and uh, did uh, my feasibility plan and everything and approached Kola Abiola. And uh, he looked at it, he said it was fantastic, he was interested, but unfortunately he had to look at his peculiar situation because his father already had a media organization oh. and he didn't want it to look like he was trying to compete with his father. And, but that was how the old arrangement fell through. So he now said, but he saw the expression of my face that I was a bit disappointed, I was, very, I was actually downcast, you know, and... He suggested, oh, why can't you do something? I said, like, what? He said, public relations. And that was how, right there, he gave me a job for wow. their company to go and handle the PR for Summit Oil International. How did that go? And, oh, extremely well. And that was what others saw. And people started offering me things. We can't go any further without talking about your political ambition and your political journey as well, because you've had quite a run. In 1993, you joined MKO's presidential campaign, and you were arrested and detained for opposing the regime, uh, the, opposi the opposing regime at that time. What was your experience like, being arrested and going? Well, politics for me is something I do like a hobby. Some people do it as a career. I've never been a career politician, but. I went into active politics from 1982, but never contested. In 1993, when Chief Abiola went into it, naturally, I believed in him. I knew he was a good man who could do things. He had his faults, but trust me, he was one of the greatest Africans that ever lived. And uh, after the election, we were expecting results, but it was annulled, and we felt bad. And I was one of those... Outspoken uh, Really fighting that you cannot kill such a wonderful baby. They didn't listen to us. It landed me in a long bond detention. How long did you spend I was there just for a couple of weeks and just came out. I thought you were going to say just for a couple of hours. Like, oh, just a couple no. of weeks? Some people were in detention for years. Mine was minor, very minor, very, very minor. And uh, came back and still continued agitating for the revalidation of that election. And then Chief Abiola himself was eventually arrested. Thereafter, Abacha had come into power then. I was to be picked up and charged possibly for treason as one of the brains behind the pirate radio station called Radio Freedom and later Radio Kudirat. Uh, but at that time, I didn't know anything about it. But <laughs> if you told the military you don't know anything, you're wasting your time. So I managed to escape through the bush into Kutunu. They were Badagri. literally coming after you. Ah, well... Uh, we got tipped off that I had to disappear. I never planned to live abroad in my life. But that was how the journey started. So I got to London. Three months again. Nothing to do. Then one day, a cousin of mine, Shegu Fatoe, asked me, hey, Bros, you have been here for three months like joke like Joko. If you are not careful, you will become a security guard. Or you even <laughs> have to wash plates or dead bodies. I said, no. That will not be my portion. And... He said, but you are a journalist back home. Why can't you do something in London? I said, how? He said, like a magazine. That was how the idea I took to call Abiola that time came, came back. back. And that was the ovation. And then, and I told him the problem. Money says, if it is not at home, let no man make any plan in his absence. So I said, where am I going to get money from? He said, ah, you have to see what is chasing you before you start running. So we did our business plan, realized that we needed 150,000 pounds. <laughs> if you sold my family from first generation to the last generation, <laughs> there was no way we were going to come up with that kind of money. I went to my bank, the National Westminster Bank, to see if I could get a loan. The manager looked at me and said, no, you have no history of doing business in the UK. There is no way we can give you. But I, she could see the enthusiasm in my face. She said she could risk an overdraft of 5,000 pounds. Then my uncle Chief Fatwe, who was with the multi links then, gathered everything he had and sent me ten thousand pounds. That was how we started. Wow. From one fifty, we didn't have more than twenty thousand pounds. 
and it became such a huge magazine to do. Evasion is one, if not the only bilingual magazine in Africa, published in both English and French. A lot of people say that the major appeal of the magazine is that it focuses on the lives of the rich and famous. And you're very influential as well. So was that something you did on purpose to say, I'm a very influential person, I would focus on celebrating the lives of the rich and the famous? No, it was just a kind of metamorphosis. When we started, we were very political. Uh, actually, we had a lot of uh, dissidents who were living in Nigeria contributing to ovation like uh, Sonana Olumese, Ike Okonta, and others. But somewhere along the line, one day, we covered a wedding. I think it was Patrick Koshone Jr.'s wedding in London. And when he came up, he said, hey, you guys are beginning to look like, look like hello. And I'm like, hey, hello. Then I went to pick. Hello, so, I and I said, oh, we can do something better. Nigerians are more flamboyant than oh, what nice. I see in Hello. And that was it, and we started. So in 2011, you contested for the presidency under NCP. What did you think Nigeria lacked at that time that you contested? Yeah, I, I was actually tired of grumbling and lamenting like Jeremiah. We complain a lot in Nigeria and do nothing about it. I looked at the caliber of people who were contesting, and I knew that by my experience, by my exposure, I was eminently qualified. But what I didn't know was the lack of readiness on the part of our people. electorates. Mm. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. Maybe we have not suffered enough. Because everywhere you go, people are suffering. People are complaining. Mm. But at the end of the day, when the results come, you see a man who has never enjoyed the third road will still go and vote for that local government chairman. You see a man who has never tasted pipe bone water will still go and vote for the man who made it impossible for him to taste the water. But do you and think it might be a case of you know people not being exposed and maybe people being illiterate as well? No, well, I, would, I, I attribute it to so many factors, ethnicity, a lot of people, once their village boy or townsman is involved, then they follow him blindly. Mm. Forgetting that even the so-called money will not get to all of them. Religion. Once he's a Muslim or he's a Christian, then you follow him. Then the king of them all, cash. Cash. That was 2011. Now we're in 2014 and there's another elections coming up in 2015. What is your state of mind about this country? Uh... I'm on my bended knees praying to God to make sure that things go well. I'm worried. Everybody is worried. Uh, the signals are not too pleasant. But what can we do other than to pray to God? Uh, I pray that we will be able to have good candidates come out and good people vote for them. So what more can we expect from um, Dele Momodu? Well, I mean, I, I always come up with all kinds of ideas. But... I think my passion is the media. So whatever I'm going to do... Centered around... I'm, I'm, I'm going to be 55 next wow. year. And, you look very uh, good for your age. Oh, thank you very much. And I just feel, what more can I do? Let me do this very well. Building a good brand like Coca-Cola, everywhere you go, you, even if you don't like the owner, you must you like the product. You still patronize it, yes. That is the level... We are taking over here. It's been really nice talking to you, Mr. Deli Momodu. I have had so much fun listening to you go on and on. And you've had a very interesting life. Thank Not you, many people can talk about military running after them, <laughs> running into exile, going to sleep in jail for four weeks. It's quite adventurous, if you know what I mean. Thank you, Toke. Right. I have also followed you for your information. So let me turn the tide against you now because uh, I'm looking forward to your. Uh, Presentation at the Headies. Okay, yeah. Ah, I'm looking see? forward to that as well. Yes, Thank you. you and Bovi. Yes. And I, I like Bovi a lot. Yes, I, I actually posted both of you on my Instagram page. Oh, wow. When, when I'll the check promo it out. Came, when the promo came out. I'll yeah. check it out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank for you time. so much. I look forward to well, you're not, We're not letting you go yet. What have I done? Let's go on a quick break. That fancy segment that you love so much is coming up next. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Training on Hip TV. It's time for your favorite part of the show. This is the Nasty Comment segment. And we have... Your fans really love you, sir. They knew you were coming and they just wanted to talk to you and share so many lovely messages with you. 
<laughs> You're supposed to read it out. This is pure comedy. Does he think presidency is like getting chieftaincy title? It is not. But that is why you are getting what you are getting. Femi, unfortunately, Deo Modu has no political pedigree or track record of management other than his publishing business. Because Femi doesn't know me. <laughs> Otherwise, he would have known that all the biggest players in the Nigerian political history at different times have dealt with. Okay? At the age of 23, I was a private secretary to the then deputy governor of Ondo State, Chief Akiyama I was only 23. I mean, <laughs> you can imagine. And I'm talking about the old Ondo State combining Ondo and Ikiti at that time. So, I was 23. In fact, from the age of 22, I joined politics and I already knew the MPN chairman, Chief Adesaki Loye. I knew the then governor of uh, Oyo, Chief Omolulu Loyo. I knew Chief Bolaige. I knew everybody across board. At the age of 26, I was working for the owner of IFE. About wow. Kwadish Jade, Olubuje II. I was working for him. I was only 26. At 28, I joined Chief Moshud Abiola. And I was working with him. So, I mean, I, I don't know what political pedigree <laughs> <laughs> you will need beyond that. Not many people in many lifetimes will have such an opportunity. You you know? And I came in, became uh, the editor of Classic, as we mentioned. And I've, I never left politics for once. Then, as, as in no win last election, you don't decide, make you day on a low key. All these bad belly people we day after Nigeria money. I don't know what that means. I just said, all these fat men self, I beg, you better stick to, in my family, Ayo, you speak Yoruba, Agbatio Yoku, Aunloni, if you see any old man like me, who has no belly, the man is too stingy. Nice, very nice. Well, thank you for coming by. It's been really nice having you on Trending. Thank you. And we are following okay. you all the way. We can't wait to see what's coming up next with Daily Momodu By and your vision magazine and, of course, your political uh, ambition as well. My political mission. Mission, that's the word. Let's say <laughs> yeah, that. Mission. Okay, <laughs> guys, so let's check out our top five international TV series out right now. On today's top five international TV series, at number five we have The Good Wife. And today's number four is The Americans. And today's number three international TV series is Hannibal. And our number two international TV series is Orange is the New Black. And our number one international TV series today is The True Detectives. That's all we can take on the show today. Thank you guys for tuning in and massive shout out to Deli Momodu for coming by. Make sure that you join this conversation. Follow us on Twitter. We are www.twitter.com forward slash hip TV. You can check us out on Instagram. We are trending on hip TV. Watch your past episodes of trending, the present ones and the ones to come. Go to www.hiptv.tv. Inspire someone today. Be good. Be excellent to one another. I'll see you guys on the next episode of trending. Goodbye.